few months ago I made a video tackling the thorny story of Africa Corps war crimes, a subject not very familiar to most people, and I revealed how a small SS unit operated under Field Marshal Erwin Rommel's command and with manpower assistance from the Africa Corps to extend the Holocaust into Africa. Commanding this appalling series of incidents was SS Colonel Walter Rauf, Himmler's man in Africa. In short, Rauf organized a campaign to extort gold and valuables from Tunisian and Libyan Jews, and organized the placing of North African Jews into concentration camps, where several thousand died in Tunisia alone. The results of all this plundering and abuse is collectively termed Rommel's Gold, which is a little unfair to the Desert Fox, for though Rommel technically had command responsibility over Rauf, in reality Rauf answered to Himmler and not to the German army. Rommel had nothing to do with how the gold was amassed or its later disposition. Enlisted is a new kind of first-person shooter that uniquely couples PvP with PvE combat. Take command of a squad of customizable AI soldiers and fight massive battles with hundreds of targets led by other players. Enlisted offers multiple campaigns to play through, featuring their own unique weapons, vehicles and equipment. Today's video, Rommel's Gold, is set in the deserts of North Africa, and you can find this setting on Enlisted as well. Use the weapons and vehicles of the desert campaign, incorporating incredible graphics and detail. Enlisted is hardcore where it matters, a very short time to kill for infantry and realistic damage models for vehicles. Play Enlisted now on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using the link. So how much gold are we talking about? Well, it's been estimated that Rauf accumulated bullion and objects to the value today of around £60 million. Following service in Tunisia in 1942, Rauf transferred to Milan in northern Italy in 1943, there to head all Gestapo and SD operations in the northwest of the country. Rommel's gold was allegedly packed into six metal ammunition crates that were shipped by U-boat from Tunisia to German-occupied Corsica. From Corsica, the initial plan was to ship the gold to La Spezia in Italy, and thence by truck to Germany. All this detail was revealed long after the war by a Sudeten German who claimed to have been part of the operation to move the gold. In 1942, Peter Fleig was a 21-year-old diver based with his unit at La Spezia, where he helped clear the port of British sea mines and also helped salvage damaged or sunken ships. On the 16th of September 1942, Fleig said he was ordered by Captain Ludwig Dahl to go to Corsica with his diving equipment to take part in a covert operation. Arriving in the German barracks at Bastia, Captain Dahl introduced Fleig to three German lieutenants, whose job it was to escort the six metal crates off the island to Germany. According to Fleig, this plan had been abandoned, as moving the crates by truck through Italy was too risky due to partisan activities and attacks by Allied fighter bombers. The cargo could not be risked. The decision was taken to hide the crates rather than risk a long journey. They could then be retrieved at some point in the future. A plan was created to hide the crates just off the shore and probably retrieve them after the war. This was why Fleig had been sent from La Spezia. As a clearance diver, his task was to oversee the stashing of the crates offshore under the sea in a cavern. According to the evidence of an SS corporal involved in the operation that recently came to light, Rommel's gold was dropped into the ocean about one mile off the town of Bastia in Corsica, the exact coordinates noted down in code by the SS. The question is, is all of this real, or is the story of Rommel's gold just that, a story? People have searched the area where it was suspected the Germans sank the gold, but haven't found anything, but that doesn't mean it isn't there. Six metal ammunition crates would not have withstood 80 years of immersion in salt water very well. They would have fallen apart, and the heavy gold objects would have sunk into the shifting sands on the seabed. To recover them today would require a proper archaeological investigation and the hoovering up of tons of sand. Even Ian Fleming, the creator of James Bond, a keen nautical treasure hunter himself, searched for Rommel's gold without success. The reliance of historians upon the testimony of Peter Fleig, a noted post-war treasure hunter himself, and the apparent sole witness to the fate of the gold is of course problematical. 
The SS under Rauf most certainly looted the Jews of North Africa, but I think it more likely that Rauf organized its shipment to Germany sometime before the events I've outlined in Corsica. Rauf was a highly efficient and ruthless officer, with the means and authority to move such material via more regular routes to Germany, via ship, aircraft, and train. It could be that the real Rommel's gold was moved not long before the events of the story, and became just another shipment of Nazi loot destined for re-smelting into Reichsbank gold bars. This gold among the huge German reserves that ended up hidden in a mine at Merkers in 1945 and was captured by the US Army. So what did Rauf have to say about Rommel's gold? Well, not very much. Captured in Milan in May 1945, Rauf was interrogated in a POW camp about his activities on the Eastern Front in North Africa and Italy, specifically his involvement in the Holocaust. He then managed to escape from a camp at Rimini and managed to get to Syria, where from 1948 he worked as a military advisor to the president during its war against Israel. Eventually, Rauf and his family ended up in Chile in South America. Incredibly, between 1958 and 1965, Rauf was employed by the BND, the West German Intelligence Service, in South America, being paid for his troubles. He even went to Germany in 1960 to claim a pension and was not arrested, even though a wanted Nazi war crime suspect. The Israeli Mossad tried to assassinate Rauf in South America, but the wily old Nazi managed to avoid their agents. Under dictator General Augusto Pinochet, Rauf worked as a secret police advisor in Chile. On the 14th of May 1984, Rauf, who was suffering from lung cancer, died of a heart attack, a free man, his funeral a major Nazi occasion. Of Rommel's gold, he apparently never spoke of it. Whether anything will ever be found, no one really knows. And by the way, there is another version of the fate of Rommel's gold that the stash was seized by an Africa Corps unit and buried somewhere in the desert by them to be recovered after the war. Sounds like the plot to a Hollywood movie, if you ask me. And people have again searched the desert looking for this as well, also without any luck. Play Enlisted now on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using the link. You get a free bonus pack for registering using my link, including multiple weapons, soldiers and premium account. Enlisted. Get it now! Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.